Hi everybody, it's Precious Pioneer and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, uh, we're gonna be talking about self-improvement. I have 17 fully packed tips for you guys to help yourself, uh, I guess, feel better in certain elements of your life, but then also uh, different ways that you can level up uh, self-improvement. I guess it's like self-care for your insides. Um, if you're new to my channel, welcome, hi. I usually have videos about food and lifestyle and today I'm going into the lifestyle portion of it. Uh, I have a personal uh, growth series on my channel that I've been working on. Um, I have new videos every single week, so if that interests you, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. That really helps just to support me in the creation of these videos. Um, but without further ado, let's jump into it. Number one is to love yourself. And I know that it sounds really cheesy, but it's not as cheesy as it sounds. It's actually really beneficial. And I think it's often overlooked um, because it's been clickbaited a lot, but without that element, you know, a lot, we can't really thrive if we don't believe in ourselves and we don't love ourselves to accomplish everything that we want to accomplish in this life, you know? It's taking the time to learn about yourself and accept yourself for who you are. Taking the time to understand who you are in the first place will really help assist you with that. It's learning to become your ally and not your enemy. Number two is to exercise. There are so many different medical research out there that proves that exercising just really helps to benefit your feel-good energy and your helps you put you in a happier mood and a state of mind and i think that a happier mood and state of mind honestly just encourages you to become better on the inside it helps you to reach those certain goals and milestones at work it gives you uh, extra room for creativity and all these different things so definitely consider exercise it can be whatever you want or hope it to be it can be biking surfing, skiing, running, dancing, yoga, all these different things. You know, I think uh, oftentimes we get uh, beat down by like exercise culture of how we have to run and lift weights and that's awesome too, but it can be whatever is your favorite thing. Honestly, I like to switch it up each year. I used to do a lot of sports and so now I find creative ways to keep me busy. I really don't like running that much and so I like to walk the, walk with my dog and I like to bike a lot. Um, I'm thinking about, I'm moving closer to the beach next year, so I'm thinking of maybe picking up surfing you know, so it just really depends on like what you enjoy. And so don't feel pressured to do anything that you don't really like doing because it doesn't have to have to be that way. Exercise can actually be really fun. Um, just get your body moving however you like to get moving. Um, going into that same sort of direction, number three is to eat well. I've definitely had the like experience of being a quarantine potato, but it's true that eating good makes you feel good. And so I, that goes into every aspect of your life. So eating good like fruits and vegetables and all those different things, it's not black to me, you know, it helps increase the serotonin in our body that gives us that feel good energy. So that's why it's the same thing of like endorphins of a workout, you know, all those energies, all those like elements on our body makes us like feel really good and feel really happy. And so those combined just puts you in a really good mood for your day and for everything that you want to do in your life. And so definitely eat better and eat good foods. You can start by making micro adjustments and set goals to eat more fruits and vegetables and maybe limiting sugar. It doesn't have to be a huge drastic thing of like, okay, I'm only eating this from this point out. Food is so unique to each person. Um, so definitely just take small steps in the right direction, you know, whether that's, you know, to eat an apple a day to keep the doctors away, you know, it can be as cheesy <laughs> as that, or it can just be like small little things of um, maybe cutting out soda or any uh, processed foods that you can. Number four is to switch it up, to change up your habits. We are definitely, we are definitely creatures of habit and ritual and routine routine and so sometimes that can feel a little bit mundane and unmotivating or sometimes you may be deep into an unhealthy habit that you're trying to break free of so definitely try switching up your habits to become a little bit better i definitely recommend this book called atomic habits it's talking about how you can just getting better one percent each day can make an astronomical difference in our lives i um, definitely recommend that book but changing up your habits is basically just focusing on goals that align with your lifestyle sometimes i think we get caught up in routine that we really realize that maybe this doesn't fit our lifestyle anymore. You know, maybe this just isn't for us. Like, you know, for me, I used to be in track and until I broke my knee like twice, I tore my ACL. And so running and a high impact jumping and stuff just 
just doesn't cut it for me anymore. So I have to find new ways to like exercise or do whatever. So whether that be something else in, in your life, like just finding new habits or new goals that kind of align with, with your life a lot better can really make a big difference. If you need help with any goal setting or anything like that, I'll definitely leave a card up here. I made a video about goal setting a while ago, so I'll leave it up there for you. Number five is to accept failure. Um, Because without it, you can't learn and you can't grow. So embracing it as a life lesson can honestly just make a world of impact. So um, a lot of people are really afraid of rejection, of not getting that job or stepping out on a limb to try something new, but you don't know until you don't try. I think that's one of the biggest advice tips that I can give you. Like I think the biggest thing that I noticed when I was in college that a lot of people were picking majors or classes and stuff that they just wanted to settle into. Um, but the thing is though, like, and then they end up switching it on the last like senior year, everybody changes their major and then they're in school for another like three or four years. But the biggest thing that I can recommend and tell you is honestly just to try everything, do everything just to see if you like it. And then if you don't, it's okay. So just embrace failure because failure helps shape who you are. And it's part of like the lessons of your life. It helps to identify you. So you know what you like and what you don't like and what you're good at and what you don't, or um, it'll help you level up in certain things that only you can fail enough times to get to that point. And so embrace it with like a warm hug, I guess, you know, because it's essential and it, it's only going to make you better. And failure is only bad if you just never learn from it. So with that, take notes, move forward and grow from it, you know, take the lessons that come with it. Number six is to be thankful. Um, I think that's an underrated self-improvement tip. You know, I think gratitude goes such a long way. I have an old video on my channel about gratitude of how just calling, a, the simple act of calling someone that means, who's so, calling someone who's really important to you um, can kind of make the world of difference of how you see them and how they see you. And, but if we somehow implement that in our lives on the daily, it can make a world of impact of how we see the world and how we treat other people. And then not only that of how they treat us. And I think it's one of those really unique things that has like a ripple effect or a butterfly effect of showing that um, can encourage others. And I always say that kindness is really contagious. And so being thankful is like a really underrated self-improvement skill, I suppose. I think that um, you can't ever chase happiness. And even if you manage to chase it and catch it, as soon as you do, it quickly disappears. I think that the, the thought that success leads to happiness um, is actually quite wrong. It's actually the reverse. It's happiness leads to success. So if you prioritize um, happiness in your life and prioritize the things that you're grateful for that you have in your position now. It can only grow from this point that you're at. And I think that's really what your mindset really does determine your the amount of success that you have. Just enjoying the place that you are now in this moment. Even if you have just a few moments each day to take aside to just um, be thankful for everything that, that's around you because nothing is ever guaranteed. And so just taking those few moments each day to be thankful, it can make a world of difference. Number seven is to learn a new skill. This is probably my favorite on the list. I think I'm the queen of just learning random skills and picking up random facts because I think everything is just so fascinating, which sounds really lame, but um, honestly, I like just picking things up and just being curious. I have a naturally just very curious mind. And so learning a new skill skill can kind of spark that joy for you because there's always this new novelty of like learning something new that that brings a little bit of excitement because it's like the unknown of like learning something um so whether that's um picking up a guitar lesson or um trying something that you've always wanted to um i think that can be really fulfilling in your self-growth and then also it's like another thing in your toolbox of something that you can do, uh, which helps bring, boost up your self-confidence in that regard. Also, I think it's really great for like someone who's introverted or is naturally fearful to try something new. I think this uh, tip can actually help you to not be fearful and to step out on that limb and be willing to try something uh, for the betterment of yourself, or it could be for someone else as well. It can be a great tool just for overall self-development. Number eight is um, kind of, I'm not gonna say counterintuitive, but it's also, uh, it's to, it's like broken up in half, like stop wasting time and then also learning how to rest. So those two go hand in hand, but they're also very different. Going to the first one, we can always carve out um, time in our day to put our goals and our dreams and our accomplishments 
and them like it's a matter of priorities we always make choices by spending by how we spend our time so if we're spending our time binge watching netflix or whatever it may be when we should be doing something else or we have dreams or something that we want to fulfill that could be taking up that space in that case number eight stop wasting time go out and do that thing because i know that you can you're just prioritizing other things right now on the other hand when it comes to things that we should be doing versus like procrastination you know that's where we need to be aware and conscious about what we're doing on the other hand there's no need to associate every single second with a thing that we have to accomplish on our day and rest is equally important like you need to get enough sleep you need to get enough rest because um the way that i see it is that like we are kind of like the batteries on our phone like if we're working on 20 percent each day and we're stretched so thin on that one percent you know because that one percent lasts like lasts about like five minutes you know longer than normal um but at the same time it takes so much longer re to recharge and if we keep charging our batteries that the, that way they eventually like they eventually like drain out and so it's just really important to find a healthy balance of like working but then also resting you know and i think both are equally important but at the same time if all you're doing is resting or wasting time then maybe you should prioritize things that actually bring you joy and fulfill you so it doesn't feel like work but you're getting things done number nine is to read i love reading i think as a kid i just used to read so much because i i was very fascinated with different stories and things like that um i was a huge like percy jackson um fan uh, like i really liked greek mythology and anything that i can learn that was new um but now i'm definitely interested in like business books or finance or cookbooks you know so those are my favorite things but i think reading is one of my favorite things because it's a perfect thing that you can do to wind to learn something new so you can work on the skills at the exact same time but then also it's a, the perfect way to like wind down or to start your day instead of like grabbing your phone for instagram or whatever the first thing that you do or like scrolling on instagram like before you go to bed first off it's really bad for your eyes and i already have poor eyes but it also helps you to like um, put you in a very calm state before you're going to bed or getting or waking up you know so it's a very useful thing that way but then also reading stimulates your mind um there's a research study that was given in like 2015 and then also recently in 2018 that over a quarter of over 25 percent of americans don't read a book within the given year like not a single book and granted you know we all have our different like busyness and everything like that but like one book you know so i think it's definitely interesting to dedicate time to bettering yourself that way and it can definitely take time to adjust to that habit and so some something that i always recommend is just to read um for five minutes each day and of course depending on, what, on whether the book is like super good or super bad that day you'll end up reading more or if you're trying to hit certain milestones and maybe read like a chapter a day i think that everybody can like read one or two pages 10 pages you know each day you know it, it depends on your priority like like i said everybody has different priorities but reading is definitely one of my favorite things and that can definitely help you to self-improve number 10 is to meditate or to find moments for yourself to clear your mind meditating has gotten really popular over the years i think so especially like in main troop culture but whether it's like five minutes a day just having a moment to just relax detox from like all of the flooded information we're getting um can be, just be really really astronomical for you like your own personal health and well-being just to take a moment to just unplug close your eyes and take some deep breaths you know like whatever you need to do to get going i think that can be really helpful like for me in the morning i enjoy like a few moments of like prayer or um just you know tapping into the thankful side of you know the the tips like i just think that like you know like i'm very grateful to have the day that i'm about to accomplish or get to and so whatever that is for you just taking that moment um for gratitude or to think about uh, what you have for the day or to think of nothingness um can just really be really impactful of just the concept and the like release of letting go you know just you know letting go of whatever is like um weighing you down can really be helpful number 11 is to push through adversity obviously easier said than done <laughs> you'll come across all kinds of different trials and tribulations but i think of how we can overcome them is where that self-improvement and that self-growth lies and as cliche as it sounds i feel like this video is full of cliches but as cliche as it sounds you know diamonds are only made with 
applied pressure. And so sometimes you have to be a little bit scruffed up and, and be put under pressure to see how you'll make it to the other side of the tempest, you know? So you just kind of have to take it with a grain of salt and to push through adversity because just know that there is always light on the other side and there's always like a silver lining you know what i mean i'm just throwing a whole bunch of cliches at you <laughs> but basically it, they're cliches because there's always some truth to them so just getting through through that uh, moment of adversity will really make a huge impact over on your overall character and self-improvement number 12 is to accept change change is uh inevitable and sometimes we want things to stay the way that they are um, but if we're not, if we're too complacent and we're not constantly evolving, growing, self-improving, it can be very, very difficult and stuck, you know, and time will continue to pass and things will change around us, whether we like it or not. So the quicker that we can embrace it and accept it, the better off we'll be because as we grow and change, the world uh, grows and changes around us, people around us grow and change. And so the quicker that we can just accept it, um, the happier and more well off we'll be, you know, because we'll be keeping up, I guess. That being said, you know, like change is definitely different for, for everybody. You don't have to keep up with the Joneses by any means and just change, just to change, you know, but um, when that time comes and you, you'll you know, don't be afraid, you know, just, just roll with it. Number 13 is to accept the past. Life lessons are something that you can definitely grow from. If it's out of your control, most of the time it's just best to let it go. I feel like sometimes we carry on a lot of baggage and a lot of weight and um, you know, that's not healthy for us. And sometimes it's just best to let it go because we're not defined by every little uh, trial and tribulation and whatever we went through in our past, it's how we look back at it and change and evolve into who we are today. You know, and so sometimes it's best to just let it go and move on and forgive and move forward. Be mindful to change the things that are within your control. And if not, just let it go. The past can be a part of what made you who you are today, but it doesn't have to define who you will be in the future. Number 14 is to give. Learning to give without obligation is a huge self-improvement because it's not necessary. It's never about the money or the cans you donate to the drive or uh, the cancer organization um, that they ask you when you're at the checkout line. It's never about that. In some regard, of course, it is like you know they need that funding and all those things. But for you um, on giving, it's actually about your heart. You know, it's about like um, getting into not necessarily the position, but making the routine of that something that comes natural to you to be naturally a giving person uh, is a really key attribute to self-improvement you know it's all about the way that you think and the way that you perceive that sort of action when you give time energy food resources you make the world a better place therefore making it a better place to live in when the world is better you feel better it's this beautiful cycle it's this incredible thing of the more you give to the world the more you get out of it for the sake of other people, if that makes any sense. And it's pretty wholesome. 15, surround yourself with positive people. As I'm sure you know, you are who you surround yourself with. So surround yourself with positive people because if you surround yourself with, I don't know, negative people, toxic people, people that don't align with your goals and all these different things, people who constantly bring you down or tear you apart or are against you, I guess, you know, it can definitely take a toll on who you are and you begin to identify with the people around you or who they identify you as and you may not fit that narrative or that label. And so it's definitely important to check in with your circle and make sure that they are aligned with um, your purpose or, or at least a supporting group of people. I know that that pushing people out of your life can seem kind of hard or cruel or whatever it may be, but I think that working towards your own personal development and self-improvement is never really about them anyway. It's about you and you, oftentimes and more, the most important thing is in that regard is that you need to look out for what's best for you and your own mental health or whatever position you're in. And it's not really selfish in that regard because you need to do what's best for you, no matter how difficult. Number 16 is to reflect. Reflecting is so therapeutic. Um, I'll leave a video that I made about the power of journaling, honestly keeping record of some of the most important important milestones in my life 
uh, whether the good, bad, the ugly, the funny, the silly, whatever. It's really refreshing knowing what my mind's state was at that period in my life. And it helps me to kind of navigate where I'm going in the future, you know? So I think that having moments to reflect on what I've, or what you've accomplished thus far and taking a moment to realize where we're at can actually be like a huge revelation for us. Like maybe we're in going in the wrong direction or maybe we need to pivot and move somewhere else, but we don't know if we don't ever take the moment to stop and reflect on where we are or how we even got there, you know? So taking that moment can make all the difference. But that is all the tips that I have for you guys. I really hope that you have a major takeaway from this. Um, leave, a comment be- leave a comment below of what tip that you found the most beneficial or the ones that you're probably going to try. Um, I hope that you really enjoyed this video. If you like more videos like this, also let me know. I always respond. Um, but without further ado, thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. Um, if you're new, don't forget to hit subscribe. I'm watching you. Um, without further ado, guys, bye. I'll catch you guys next time.